Okay. We're back. Thank God. It took forever and a fucking day. But we're back. I know I told you I'd explain it earlier, but honestly, there ain't much to explain. We're back. Okay, guys. We're back. I don't know what the fuck just happened, but we're back. Okay. So like I was saying, Shweaves, pick out whatever my b next big stream thing is, because I trust you. I want to do something fun. You know me. You know exactly what kind of fun I'm looking for. I know you got me. But now, let's wrap this up. After we split off from you guys, the four of us got into the elevator on the left took us to the other side of the grate. After that, we headed down another hallway. It took us toward the bow and eventually to the number six that you two found earlier. We opened it and kept going. There was another locked door behind it, like usual, but this time we had to complete two different areas before we could unlock it. Once we were through that door, there was another hallway that went the other direction toward the stern. So, on your way, you found the elevator. No sound? Hold on. Okay, we're good. We're good. I guess I have my mic off. That's right. So, in other words, you kinda did a lap, huh? You came from that side to this side. Yeah. So, where's the number nine door? Over here. Uh. By the way, you know, it's because of Santa that we're all here right now. Huh? That all seven of us are going to door nine. What? You don't get it? Santa, seven, and Lotus, what's their digital route? Nine. It's nine. That's right. They could have just left me behind and kept going if they'd wanted to. But they didn't. Because Santa wouldn't let them. He said, we can't leave June and the others behind. That's why we went looking for you guys. And then you got on the elevator and went back to the central staircase. That's right. Hmm. Well, uh, I wouldn't have called that one. Uh, that Santa would be the one to stick up for you. I... Oh, don't get me wrong. I don't mean that Seven and Lotus said they wanted to leave me behind. We were just talking about it, and Santa objected to it first. Is that so? We're here. So, is this... Yeah. There's no other place for us to go. Nope. Just look around. There's a big old iron wall at the end of the hallway. The other hallways on the left and right are blocked by metal grates. I see. All right. Let's get moving. <sighs> oh. No way. <laughs> The Nine Door. We're finally here. No doubt about it. This is Door Nine. <laughs> oh, finally! This is the last... Junpei, look behind you. Behind? What? W why? A door... and a Nine. There's another one? Hey, what the hell? What the hell is going on here? There's a red there, too. That means... And of course it won't open. But why? Why the hell are there two doors? Do you think perhaps one is the right door and the other is the wrong one? I don't know about that. It seems unlikely. What makes you say so? Well, think about all the rooms we've been through so far. They're full of puzzles, but there are always hints about how to solve them. I'm pretty sure there aren't any rooms where we just had to go with our best guess and leave it to instinct to solve the puzzle. Do you really think that at the very end of the game, Zero's going to suddenly throw in something that depends entirely on luck? I agree with titties. That is entirely wrong. Then you're saying there's some sort of hint in this room? No, I don't think there's a hint anywhere in here. I searched it very well when I was in here before. I didn't find anything that might have been a hint, though. Hmm. Well... Yeah. Both of these are the right door. I mean, if you think about it, 
Zero never actually said there was only one door with a nine on it. It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a nine. So if there are two number nine doors, if we split it up right? That's not gonna work. You've got a notebook and a pen, right? Can I borrow them? Yeah, here. Look at this. You get it? The numbers on the top are all the combinations with digital roots of nine. The numbers on the bottom are the people who don't fit. There's only eight possibilities if we split up into two groups of three or four people. So... If three people go through the door, then four are left behind. If four go through, then three are left behind. Right? Yeah. No way. <sighs> hmm. <sighs> Come to think of it. What is this room? It looks like it's set up for some kind of ceremony, but what kind? Is that an altar? No, it, it couldn't possibly be. Okay, I give up. I give up. I figured if we sat around here long enough, someone would volunteer. But I guess nobody's got the guts to do it. What are you talking about? What? You guys didn't figure it out yet? <sighs> fine, fine, let me enlighten you. Clover was mostly right with her little explanation earlier, but she missed something. She wasn't really wrong, she just... Ah, screw it! Let me just write it out. If you're trying to leave with a group of three and a group of four and get everybody out, Clover's right. But there's another way. Only one combination, though. If you split us up into groups of three, three, and one, you can make this combination. Wait, this means... Don't get me wrong here, I'm not trying to copy Ace or anything like that. Even if he hadn't been the hero back in the big hospital room, I'd still be saying the same thing. The same thing? Are you saying... Yeah. I'll stay behind. Uh... Uh... <laughs> uh... uh... Why are you acting so heroic all of a sudden? Are you some kind of idiot? No, I am completely against this. I'll be goddamned if I'm gonna have to owe you for getting out of here. Can we please move the model's hand so it's not looking like she's about to give him a hand, Jay? Like, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I know I should be focused on the dramatic tension, but from an artist's point of view, that kind of looks like she's reaching down to... You know, I really shouldn't be pointing this out for anyone that probably has kids in the room. I'm against it, too. I didn't want to leave Ace behind, and I don't want to leave you, either. I don't like that idea. There's got to be other options. I disagree as well. I can't say I care much for you being the hero. Well, there you go, Seven. Proposal denied. Clover's right. There's got to be a better way than this. Hmm. Doesn't make any sense. Whoa, hold on a minute. I haven't said anything yet. Are you... agreeing? You want to leave him here? Nah, I'm against it. I don't want to leave Seven here alone. Then I don't see how it matters. I said alone. Huh? I said I don't want to leave Seven alone. W what the hell are you... What? You don't get it? I can't leave just one person. I need two more. Three people, including Seven. I'll be leaving behind three people. That's my proposal. No, those are my orders. What do you mean, orders? What the hell makes you think you can order us around? Who the hell's gonna listen to you? Everyone. You all will. In three seconds, you won't have a choice. What? Three, two, one. <laughs> See? I told you. Where is Emmy right now?
I can't seem to find Emmy at the moment. Ziggy's streaming. Nikki's lurking. Schweebs is doing Schweeby things of making thumbnails. I have no idea where Nocturne is. And any newcomers that have come in here, I feel, feel like just magically poofed. Oh, you're looking hardcore! Woo! Hmm. Well, <sighs> if anyone is gonna be like, I wonder how he's gonna react to this whole betrayal moment right here of Santa with a gun to June's head. Honestly, guys, I got nothing. I got nothing. Huh? What? Why? What the hell is that? The gun's from the other room. What room? One of the rooms behind door six. I should have known he was gonna do this. I should have taken the gun. <laughs> well, it's too late now, fat ass. Damn it! <laughs> now, time for you to start following my orders. Ace, Lotus, congratulations! I've chosen you to come with me. Put your hands in the red. Hey, you deaf? I gave you an... <sighs> right, fine. I didn't want to waste any bullets, but you guys just don't get it. <sighs> he really shot it? But why? Santa, why are you... Santa? I thought... I thought you were one of us. I thought we were friends. What? You knew about the leaf words and the four leaf clover. What the hell is that shit? I've got no idea. You're lying! Shut up! Just shut up, you stupid bitch! You want me to put a bullet in your fucking head? Santa. All right, assholes. What are you still standing there for? Get over here and scan those bracelets. I don't have all day. Oh, what's the matter? Your hearing's starting to go? Going senile, maybe? Uh. <sighs> 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 yeah, that's it. It's the only way. Please, go. Huh? No way. Jumpy, what are you saying? If you stay here, you're going to be stuck, Jumpy. And so will Clover and Seven. I know, but you don't need to worry about us. We'll figure something out. Right, Seven? Uh, right. You just leave it to us. It's gonna piss me off to do what Santa says, but... Don't worry about me, either. There's still something I have to take care of. No! No! You can't! Ace! Lotus! Don't come over! Don't worry about me! Please! <laughs> Please. Uh. <sighs> Go. Oh, all right. Fine. All right. Now let's get those hands on the scanner panel. <sighs> <sighs> What's the hold up? What? You think I'm fucking around here? I don't give a shit about this girl. The red doesn't need a person, you know? All I need is the bracelet. You get it? Good. Now put your fucking hands on the scanner. I'm not gonna say it again. Fine. <sighs> Good job. Now, Lotus, pull that lever. Soon as the door opens, you get your ass in there. Try anything stupid, and you know what happens, right? Damn it. Good. Go. Later.
June. <sighs> so, what do you want to do, Junpei? What do you mean, what do I want to do? What can we do? What the hell is that? Shh, quiet! Where is it coming from? Could it be? Uh, hey, I think it's coming from this coffin. You're right. Let's open it. But how? What are those muscles for, for show? You're telling me to force it open? Just shut up and try! <sighs> Damn it! <sighs> Man, it won't even budge. Not another one. Yeah, looks like it. Do you think we have to put in the right password or it won't open? I think so. Whoever or whatever's inside this thing wants out. And now. I know that. But how? <sighs> Without a passcode, I, I don't think there's much we can do. Isn't there a hint somewhere? Well, let's look for one. Ugh, there's nothing here. Not making this easy, are they? What am I supposed to do? How can we figure it out? I need something. What the hell was that? That voice? Huh? What? What's up? Huh? Oh, um, <clears throat> uh, nothing. One, four, three, eight, three, four, two, one. those numbers oh my gosh are those huh one four three eight three four two one one four three eight three four two one huh no way what why are you? Oh! <laughs> oh? Is that you, Clover? I apologize for worrying you. Snake! You? Why? Junpei? And Seven? Is that you? Is everyone else there as well? Oh. <laughs> Jeez. Gently now. My body's still a little weak. Oh, you're back. You're back. You're really here. Oh, you're back. Come now, what's gotten into you? You're acting as though I've returned from the grave. Not as though. You did. I really thought you were dead. Huh?
I see. I believe I understand things rather well now. Thank you. In the shower room, there is a dead body wearing my clothes. Because of that, you thought that I was dead, correct? Yeah. You also discovered a corpse in the captain's quarters, and Santa turned on you here, in this room. Do I have it straight? Well, the dead body in the captain's quarters is a surprise. Sorry, there wasn't a good time to tell you. Don't worry about it. Well then, I've got a pretty decent idea of what happened while I was indisposed, but it's still something of a mystery who did all this, and why. The corpse in the shower room that looked like me, and the corpse in the captain's quarters. Why were they killed in the way they were? You don't know? No. Why would I? The guy in the shower room. We don't know who he is, so let's just call him Mr. X. Anyway, this Mr. X is wearing Snake's clothes. But you're wearing some kind of weird robes. That means someone took your clothes and put them on Mr. X. We need to figure out who that was. I apologize, but I have no idea who might have done this to me. I only just now woke up. I was unconscious during all the events you just described to me. They must have undressed me and changed my clothes during that time. When were you knocked out? When we split up to look for the red. Where did they get you? Do you remember? It was a small room in one of the hallways on sea deck. What happened? The same thing that happened to every one of us when we were abducted. A canister releasing some sort of gas was thrown into the room. I believe the gas is some sort of incapacitating agent. Then that means it was... Zero. Looks that way, huh? There's nothing else I have to tell you. When I woke up, I was in this coffin. Hmm. Why? Why did Zero make Mr. X wear Snake's clothes? How would that benefit Zero? I don't get it. What the hell does any of it mean? And I have no idea how I got the passcode for the coffin either. Truth had gone, truth had gone, and truth had gone. Where did those words come from? Why did I feel compelled to push the buttons on the bracelet after hearing them? All I know is my fingers moved on their own. It was like I did it subconsciously. I don't get it. What the hell does any of it mean? <sighs> also, Snake and Clover had been subjects in a similar experiment nine years ago. The ability to access a morphogenetic field is affected by a couple of things. The first is epiphany, and the other is danger. And... And someone did actually die. A girl. Her name was... and a girl had died during it. Morphogenetic field theory. The two murders. Switching clothes. The Nona game. Huh. Zero. He's the ringleader. The person who trapped nine of us on this sinking ship. Zero should know everything. All of our questions will be answered. <sighs> At any rate, we'll have plenty of time to decipher the details later. For now, it is of utmost importance that we escape. Junpei, it was 4.30 the last time you checked the clock, yes? That means we have less than an hour. We must hurry. Uh, hey, uh, how are we gonna get out of here? Isn't that obvious? through the other number nine door. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you're right. With Snake, we can open the door. Don't tell me you hadn't figured that out. Come on, you gotta tell me these things. I, uh, assumed you'd figured it out. Forget it, let's just get going. All right, you guys ready to go? Yes. Yep. <sighs> Not yet. Huh? Before we go in, I'd like to check something. You want to check something? Yeah, but before I do, Seven, could you pull the lever? I want to make sure we can verify with just the four of us. What do you mean? We don't need... Just do it, alright? But if the door opens, don't go in yet, okay? <sighs> Please, this is really important. I really need to check this, okay? Work with me here. Fine. Huh. All right.
right. That means the four of us can go into door nine. So? We knew that already. It's obvious. Obvious? Yeah. Now, what happens if we add Zero's bracelet? What? Zero's bracelet? Why don't you take it out, Clover? <laughs> so you did know I had it. <laughs> I picked it up because I thought it might be useful sometime. <laughs> This was on the left hand of the corpse in the captain's quarters. If you look at it, you can see it's got a zero on the face. Oh, there you are, Emmy. I was wondering where you were. Santa had a gun to June's head. You missed it. Just to make this a little easier to talk about, uh, I'm gonna call the guy we found dead in the captain's quarters, uh, Cap. Then I should be able to open door nine with just me, Clover, and his bracelet. Though the big question is, if Cap is the mastermind of this game, would he really... Anyway, uh, let's just give it a shot. Clover, give me your hand. Uh, okay. Now the captain's bracelet. And pull the lever. I knew it. Now, what does this tell us? Maybe the bracelet has to be on the wrist in order for it to work? No, that's impossible. Did you see how the panel showed a third asterisk when I scanned Cap's bracelet? Whether or not it's on your wrist doesn't matter. All you have to do is put the bracelet near the panel for it to register. Hmm. Huh. See? So what does that mean? There's only one possibility. That bracelet isn't the number zero. Is that what you're saying? That's right. Then what number is it? Let's find out. Seven, me, and Cap. If this combination opens the door, then Cap's bracelet is number six. Uh... Hey, it opened! And the door opened! What? Why? What does that mean? Uh... Isn't it obvious? Cap's bracelet is number six. But, doesn't it say zero? This isn't a zero. The symbol on here isn't a number zero. It's a letter O. O? Whoa, wait a minute. I don't get it. I mean, we figured out that Cap's bracelet is six, right? Yeah. Does that mean there are two people with sixes? There is, most likely, only one person with a six. But, I don't get it. What about June? Well, this is only an educated guess, but I think June's number was never six to begin with. Her bracelet was flipped. In other words, June's real number is... Nine. Dun, 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 I already knew that because I... If you guys remember from last night, I already told you guys gas mask form in headcanon for this stream gas mask form is nocturne that is zero that we know however the true mastermind is june aka akane nickname connie code name june she is the reason that all of this is happening i'm sorry that seems the most likely. Then all this numbered door stuff was just a load of crap? Why would you say that? Because if June is nine, then the numbers wouldn't match up. Here, look. List of all the numbered doors June's gone through. 
I'll let you know what I'm writing, okay, Snake? <laughs> and that's everything. I wrote down which door she went into and with whom. And I wrote what all the numbers were. So if you switch nine in wherever there's a six, the numbers don't work. If the digital root is seven, then you... The digital root is two, then you can't open door eight. Clover, do you notice anything interesting on that list? What do you mean? You're talking about three, right? Three? Santa's always in the room with her. That's what you're saying, isn't it? Yes, that's right. What about it? That's quite simple, really. You told me that the first time you came to this room, Santa was the first to refuse to leave June behind. Now, doesn't that beg the question why? Why would Santa do such a thing? The answer is easy. Because Santa can't open door 9 with only 7 in Lotus. Of course, there's only one reason for that. His number isn't actually 3. Santa's real number, 7? Would you be so kind as to modify my sister's equations? Yeah, sure. This is what you were getting at, right, Snake? Hmm. Hmm. Thank you. That is exactly right, Seven. Santa's true number wasn't three. It was zero. No way. Santa is zero? And June was nine, not six. Conversely, Santa was zero, not three. Plus three and minus three, they cancel one another out. Nothing appears out of order. Santa was still playing by the rules of the nonary game this whole time. Precisely. So you're saying Santa planned this whole thing? I'm not sure if he acted alone or not. But I think it is safe to conclude that he is zero. Inaccurate, but fine, whatever. If my hypothesis is correct. <laughs> hmm. Snake's hypothesis. Something doesn't seem right. June's bracelet being flipped. Even if that were possible, that would mean there are two number nine bracelets. And if that's the case... All right, that's enough talking. Let's go. It's high time we went through that door. Uh... Oh, it's right there. Oh. All right, let's keep going. I think these stairs go to the bottom deck. Also, what's up, Ziggy? How was your stream? I'm sorry, I was, I was so focused on all this sort of stuff. But um, yeah, Snake's hypothesis is kind of flipped around. Yes, Snake did have the zero bracelet, but that did not mean that he was zero. Akane truly was the culprit behind all of this even if it's kind of flimsily stated why. June's condition of being able to have that whole morphic, uh, morphogenetic field study happening to also affect Junpei is one of the biggest reasons why June is the actual culprit. Her fevers, the fact that her bracelet was never truly six to begin with, how she never truly seemed to do a lot of stuff, how Snake was, how, I'm sorry, how Santa was her right hand throughout everything. All of these red herring clues are actually so well sewn together that what this plot twist actually entails is kind of fucked up. Especially as to the motive as to why June caused all this to happen. Santa may have helped in a lot of these things, but the motive as to why June did this is probably one of the most shocking. They'll play it off in a different manner, but we know who the real mastermind is. But I don't know. Maybe I'm just talking crazy. Maybe I'm just trying to flip the script around. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's find out. Looks dry. Let's head down. Hey, it's a... 
Hmm. This is the Neptune symbol. There must be a key around here somewhere. Uh, Neptune key. I only have the Uranus key card. It's a different planet. Plus, it's the wrong kind of key. Let's turn around and go back for now. Yeah. Hey, another door. And a card reader this time. It's the Uranus symbol. This is the place. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Wow! It's totally full of books! There's so many. I don't know where to look. If we want to get through that door out there, we need the Neptune key. I say we split up and look for it. You can't be serious. Okay. This game can't be serious. Very well. This game really can't be telling me that I gotta do more. Sure thing. They gotta be fucking kidding me. Good. Let's get started then. We don't have a lot of time. Hurry. As he began his search for reasons he didn't fully understand, Junpei felt those particular words floating through his mind. Tell how happy I am right now. You can just feel the happiness just seeping through my fucking breath. Oh my lord. Uh, 
Yes and no, Ziggy. It's it's a little bit more complicated than that. Um. <sighs> Open here, find bulb. There we go. Mathematics, wow! Raymond's hypothesis. Jesus, this is what happens when you don't go to college, kids. You then end up just like, what the fuck are people trying to say in this shit right here? Then you just left like, I'm probably gonna punch someone in the fucking face. So I'm not going to even speculate. Oh boy. 
quantum gravity. Ah, Faraday. I forgot that was an actual last name to save my life. Okay, strength theory about the universe. Boy, howdy, I totally had enough brain power left in me after all the other stuff I had to do to get where we are right now. Lights in the Lights in the books, though. Cambrian. Oh, boy. Hmm. Creatures of the South Sea. Why did man We never had tails! God damn it! Evolutionist, stop it! We never had tails. If we did, that'd probably be a lot more of a reason why we're so stupid. I already have a walkthrough out just sitting around. I'm just. Oh god, my brain just, just fucking hurts. You do what you gotta do, Ziggy, but right now I'm like, my head, my head is like, swimming. Oh, thank God. Okay, so, I was in the wrong direction to begin with. Right. 
No, that's not it either. Mine swap. Swap souls and live out each other's days. But I'm not gonna go into that today. Tele temperation and telepathy. I'm not touching on that one today. Uh, thank God. Through trial and error, we found it. It took half a fucking hour. And a lot of my time span is dead. Honestly, right now I'm kind of thinking to myself, this would be the greatest thing for me. I love books, but I never have time to read all the books I want to read. But if I'm trapped in a library, I'd have all the time in the world. Okay, it says from point 
point E. shelves numerous fucking times though done that from the very fucking beginning. I am so sorry. Jesus. I am so sorry. Jesus. the light bulbs and all that sort of junk missing a book. This this is totally how I envisioned the ending to all the stuff of 999. This is this is truly truly how I imagined all of this. Truly. Like, I 
like I, I have pictured all of this. I totally was prepared for all of this. That's why I got all the sleep I could ask for. That's a damn lie. What sleep did I get today? Hi, Phoenix. Hey, what's going on, Nocturne? Did you not know? This is the final path of all of 999. We've had every ending every one of them and we're in the final escape rooms but we're missing a picture book oh no 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 we've already had all of those no, 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 no. No, we've already uh, had that ending last night. Where we had to lose by having Snake sacrifice himself for his sister, his sister's memory. We're just missing a pop-up book. Take that one book, bruh. Oh yeah, and Nikki uh, shoved a uh, axe into his brain. Guys, we've already come so far. This this has to end. If not tonight, then like Wednesday, I guess. assumption think I'm Buddhist because I end some of my uh, stuff with namaste but uh, I am not Buddhist I am no religion starting to shut down slowly but surely most because I have to do laundry at like 10 o'clock so I'm gonna queue up something that's gonna help me move shit along oh my god Many 
different cubs within every single inch of this world where we have lions, tigons, ligers everywhere to help guide you as we then assimilate and make sure we conquer every single realm within our grasp. Thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate your lovely face. Okay, uh... Oh, she's probably having a great time where I'm not gonna try and ruin anything with what's about to pop up next. has to be on a shelf though where is it <sighs> almost caught what the f that sounds like a story Emmy that sounds like a story time for that story because right now I'm trying to find a stupid book it's not even a good book Right now, I'm trying to find this goddamn book. Man, this has been very nice, guys. Three streams in one day. I'm pretty sure you guys are sick of me at this point, but whatever. Once we're done with this, I'm never playing this game ever again. Like, ever again. Oh no, 
I'm keeping to it. I am never playing this game ever again. 999, I'm never playing this again. Why would I want to play this ever again, dude? I don't want to get Junpei disease. Shit. I mean, Shreves, it's one of those games where you find joy from the side characters, the symbolism, the motifs, and all, all in all, the mystery behind it all. If the main character wasn't the biggest problem and certain plot threads weren't so oddly placed, like, one of the characters is apparently the CEO of this pharmaceutical company that kidnapped 18 children, put them, one, on this boat, the Gigantic, which is a real-life sister turn from a cruise liner to a medical ship during the First World War. But apparently it was damaged and then went missing, allegedly, until Jacques Cousteau found it and people have no idea if it's still runnable, if it's supposed to be ran aground. It's kind of up for debate for a lot of different factors until recent history found out that it is indeed out of commission and it is basically a historical find, basically, because it's almost identical to the Titanic. As such, they used these 18 kids where, two, where one of them was in this base in Nevada and the other one was on the ship where they had to have a telepathic connection with each other with the uh, with basically the morphogenic field study to basically say we'll use danger and epiphany technology of just fabricating everything to make sure that you could read people's minds from distances away one of the, two of the kids involved were one of the characters named Lotus's daughters of Nona, and I believe Alice was the second child. But also at the same time, there were four other characters in this Nonary game that were in that scenario. Two of them were Clover and Snake. All of these culminating factors just sew together so nicely to make sure that you actually feel like you can understand people's motives, their actions. You question certain ways that they do certain things, but you understand because the, the whole web is sewn so nicely. But the problem is certain executions and the fact that the protagonist of Junpei is one of the most unlikable characters in recent memory. Like, I've seen so many people harp on the Danganronpa series for having um, Makoto Naegi or Hajime or whatever the fuck the idiot from V3's whole deal was. Like, they were problematic characters for just being dumb high schoolers in this life or death scenario with all these people that are way above their grade. But I believe that Junpei as a 21-year-old is more problematic story-wise and all mannerisms-based than anything I could ever discern from any Danganronpa character as its basically sister competition. Where I believe that the protagonist Sigma in the sequel and whoever the protagonist in the midquel are actually a lot better than Junpei. If anything, I think I might actually like Virtue's Last Reward and the midquel that we'll probably touch on later a lot more than this game because they tried to focus more on what made the first game all the positives shine rather than the negatives, which was an unlikable protagonist. And that's why I don't want to touch this game when we're done. If we can finish it all tonight, I would be elated, happily. If we don't and we have to extend this a little bit longer, I understand because I'm getting tired. I have laundry to do in like 50 minutes. 
because I have to make sure I have my pants prepared for tomorrow night because I work tomorrow because bills but all in all I'd rather never play 999 ever again for as long as I live solely because the protagonist is so infuriating so nauseatingly ill fit in every regard that I just honestly want nothing more to do with the story when all is said and done and I don't know if you guys ever met uh, met people that have played games like that or you guys have played video games like that that the main protagonist or a certain character makes you not want to play the game anymore if you complete it but that's just kind of how I've discerned it because I've had to play this game so many times to get to every single ending and we're not even done with the final route that's right here before us this is a huge thing because having to see the glory that is three different murders for the main protagonist Again, a very bad sign if this is what makes you happy, seeing your main protagonist get killed off. So, all in all, it kind of just sows its own seed of what do you want to stomach, what do you want to put up with, how do you want to discern your enjoyment value of it, and if you want to proceed any further alongside it. And if the answer is you can still stomach it enough to play it, that's wonderful. I applaud anyone that does so. But as it stands with all things that are left with 999, I would rather never play this game ever again. Happily. Okay, we found the one book there, one book here. that I probably would be able to clear this out behind stream doors like getting rid of all of whatever final escape room doors are left because I can't find the last book head Uh, but I want to find this book, bruh. <sighs> but I don't know where it is. Like, it's saying all three books are easy to find. I'm like, bitch, where? Oh yeah, we checked that at the beginning. It's just like, oh, you 
found this where go fuck yourself then I'm like well go fuck yourself too Oh I feel like whoever's gonna watch this in the future when I put this on my uh, gaming channel on YouTube because that's where all my streams go in case people are like, V doesn't post anything anymore. That's a damnable lie and y'all know that. No one ever visits my gaming channel, so why should I give that a lot of attention? So anyway. I'm not shade dissing, I'm just like people that's like, V doesn't post anything anymore, he gave up on YouTube. Bruh, I, ne I never gave up on YouTube, I'm just tired. Y'all have no idea how exhausting it is to try and be enjoyable all the fucking time. It's not as easy just flipping a switch and being like, ha 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 ha! You gotta be in the best mindset, do the best things, have the right time to sit down and do all the stuff with your energy. Like right now, my computer has been running all day trying to just render things for me to edit in the near future. And I still have stuff I need to edit because of some videos I've had on mark left and right. And yeah, people are just seeing me go to the same shelves over and over again right now, but that's because I'm trying to find exactly where this last fucking book is. Yeah, I'm still looking for that final pop-up book. Like, I found the one that was with the Native Americans, the one that was with baseball, but they said that there's one final one. Top shelf where the table is. No. So far, nothing. No. Okay, found in the bottom right section of the of the left shelf, right side, lower level. That means I can stop giving these people ad money. I think it's because this is the most tedious one because it's the final path for anyone to take. Like literally the final path anyone can take because to get to the true ending is a bitch. says so in the shadows. Sheldrake 5? I think I saw the rest of this collection somewhere. Yeah, I think it was somewhere around here. Let's go take a look. 
Okay. Sheldrake. Have you heard of him? Sheldrake? Yeah. Lotus told me about him. There's a There's British, a British biochemist, biochemist named Sheldrake. Sheldrake. He has a, he has rather, a rather interesting, interesting theory. theory. Morphogenetic, Morphogenetic fields, fields which, which relies, relies on the theory, on the theory of, of morphic, morphic resonance. resonance. Really? From Lotus, huh? Well, Clover also said something to me about that stuff. She did? Yeah, um, what was it? The ability to access a morphogenetic field is affected by a couple of things. The first is epiphany, and the other is danger. <sighs> that girl. I told her not to tell anyone. You did? Why? Well... Look, man, I didn't push it because we're in a hurry, but I'm kind of sick of this. How about you just tell me, okay? Tell you what? Don't give me that. About the experiment. Ugh. Very well, fine. I'll tell you everything. But not here. Let's move to the top floor. I suppose I might as well start by telling you why I kept quiet, and why I made sure Clover did as well. To be honest, the explanation is quite simple. Zero told me not to. I had little choice. He didn't walk up and tell me, of course. He gave me a message engraved on a card. That's a Braille card. It looks just like the one you showed us earlier. So you had two cards? No, only- Huh? What do you mean? I thought that card just had some rules for the nonary game on it. Yes, it did. And those were the rules I read you. However, they were not the only thing on the card. There was something I didn't read. Well, perhaps I should say, there was something I couldn't read. And that was? Tell no one of the events that took place nine years ago. Tell, and I activate your sister's detonator. It's a threat on our lives. Oh. Well, um... Well, what about Clover? Did she get a message from Zero Two? I don't believe she did. But doesn't it strike you as strange that Zero would shut my mouth, but not hers? Yeah. To be on the safe side, however, I told her it was best not to tell anyone. Still, apparently she told you. That girl. What's wrong with her telling me? I figured some stuff out with the things she told me. Hmm. I mean, it looks like the whole activate her detonator thing was just a bluff. She's prancing around downstairs happy as a clam now that you're back. That's very true. I've decided I can trust you. I've decided to tell you the truth. The chance that Santa is zero is very high. I feel I can assume Santa doesn't have the time to observe us at the moment. And at any rate, even if he were, I very much doubt he would kill us. Why? Clover told me about the four-leaf clover, about the words. If he knew about that, then he was in my group during the first experiment. I'm sure of it. He wouldn't kill us, no matter what the situation was. Hmm. Hey, uh, Snake? Yes, I know. You want to know what happened during the experiment? Yeah. How much do you know? Clover told me about... I see. The morphogenetic field in the experiments nine years prior. How the experiments had taken place simultaneously at two locations, one being the ship and the other being a building in Nevada. And the girl that died during the experiment. She told you all that, did she? Hmm. At any rate, I now know how much you've learned. All that remains for us to determine is who did this and why, right? Yes. Can you tell me what happened? Yes. The people who organized the initial experiment were from a company called Cradle Pharmaceuticals. There were four of them running the show. Gentaro Hongo, Nagisa Nijisaki, Teruaki Kubota, Kagechika Musashido. Hongo was the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Yeah, if you guys can't tell from the shadow, Hongo is ace. Nijisaki was his right-hand man and did the lion's share of the planning. Kubota led the company's research and development division. 
Also, Kubolta should remind you guys of the ninth man if you were here during the beginning of the streams of that one bird nosed boy that died off very easily because he believed of Hongo saying that the red was only triggering to have only one person go through and proceed through the doors as long as they had the number nine bracelet. Kind of blows things out of the water when you kind of see how weird this gets, doesn't it? Musashida was their majority stockholder. It was these four people who planned the initial experiment. Hmm, let me simplify it for you. Hongo designed it, and Nijisaki put it all together. Kubota developed the technology required, and Musashido provided the cash. Huh, so it's Hongo, Nijisaki, Kubota, Musashido... Of course, more than four people were required to conduct an experiment of this scale. To that end, they organized a top-secret team to assist them with their research. All in all, they gathered ten people or so. Those ten completed their team, and they were able to begin the project. They named it the Nonary Project. The purpose of the experiment was to research the prospect of controlling a human mind through sheer will. The uh, vessel, I suppose you could say, for this control was the morphogenetic field. Huh. Why did the glycerin suddenly begin to crystallize? Why did the crystal structure of EDT undergo a sudden change? Why did the rats improve their puzzle-solving skills with each generation? Experiments with humans produce the same results. The more people who knew the answer to a question, the more there were who could answer correctly without having seen the problem before. Why is that? How could it happen? Hmm. The answer is that the shape of the answer has been stored in a field invisible to the naked eye. And through that field, the resonant event transmits information related to that answer. That's essentially the idea behind morphogenetic fields. But that's just a theory. Can't bring yourself to believe it? Yeah. Let's say someone killed another person because the devil told them to do it. Whether the devil exists or not has no relevance to the murder. They believe the devil exists. Whether or not he does is immaterial. So what matters here is that Hongo believed in the morphogenetic field. That's right. But I still don't get it. You said they wanted to figure out how to control people. Right? That is what you were saying. Yes. So how are they going to do that with a morphogenetic field? I'll keep it simple. Let's suppose 10,000 people have solved a certain problem. Guys, I feel like I'm back in school all over again, but this time, there's no desk to just lay my head down. We don't have time for y'all to teach Junpei anything smart. We all know it's wasted. The chance of you knowing that answer, even if no one has told you, will go up. Let's have another example, shall we? Say, one million people were to do a handstand right now. Tomorrow, the chances of you doing a handstand would be higher, even if you had heard nothing of this hypothetical mass handstand. Mankind's thought process and actions are all part of a resonant event. All of the resonant events encoded in the fields are projected onto you. Of course, this assumes you believe in this theory. Do you follow so far? Yeah. Now, if there was a person who had the same effect as those millions of people, if that one person were to do a handstand, other people would find themselves wanting to do handstands as well. Can you imagine what a person with powers like that would be able to do? My God! He could get everyone to eat those disgusting new sandwiches where they use donuts as buns! Or worse of, worse of them all, they can make Cardi B even more famous! No! Come on, there's no way. I'm not done. Imagine another scenario. Imagine another person. 
This is an ordinary person. Let's say he does a handstand. What if there was someone who could grab the resonant event he created by doing that and use it to make other people do handstands? What would happen then? You end up with the success of people like Markiplier, Jacksepticeye, uh, Felix himself, the Smosh Bros, Michael Bay, Stephen King, Ow, um, the man behind Fruitvale Station and Black Panther, Sylvester Stallone, Cecil B. DeMille, um, ah, Quentin Tarantino, Samuel L. Jackson, Jamie Foxx, all of the Wayne siblings, ow, uh, Jim, uh, Jim Carrey as a whole, Kate Winslet, Leonardo DiCaprio. Basically, I'm just saying that that's how true influencers operate, guys. You're ordinary people doing what you want to do, but then other people happen to make you an influencer. You're just doing what you choose to do, but it's up to the social narrative, the cognitive perception as it were, to make you into an influencer. A person who has the power to write to the field, and someone who can read from the same. You could think of them as the writer and the reader, or the transmitter and the receiver. What would the world be like if there were people with abilities like these? So the transmitter's resonant event can be transmitted through the field and sent to the receiver and then the transmitter can control the receiver however they wish. That's what you're saying, right? Yes. Close enough, at least. Come on, that's just crazy. Junpei, you really do not know how the world works, and thank you for doing that in advance, Ziggy, because I already stated the obvious of, uh... Like, you don't need the morphic, morphogenetic field to be the benchmark, like, um, I, I don't, I don't, my, I don't mean to keep using my big sister as, like, the example, because I feel like I'm picking on her, but let's just say that Schweebs herself were to do this brand new thing that no one's ever seen or done before from a Let's Player, or from a comedian whatsoever, or from anyone that just tries to just sit down and do adv advice columns. She does so with the effect of causing an entire influential wave of things because of how the public cognitive functions work and how upon visualizing and hearing it from word to mouth, it becomes the new norm. You don't need to go throughout the whole thing of the psychosis of a grand scale. Sometimes you just need to dumb it down to its basic function over how humanity works. You utilize what has been instilled on just a small scale, which can become and, ev and evolve, basically, into a grander piece. Another example, Emmy with her show Betrothed. I don't know when it's going to come out, but it probably will drop in the near future. With what she's instilling could be the sowing seeds of something of a new revolutionary process into the creative function. That causality can then evolve and elevate into something that becomes the new norm for what is for a fictional construct into a writer, into a creator, into a voice actor or actress, into a show producer into a lot of things when you utilize these sort of things i'm sorry to go all psych student on you guys but this is something something that always interests me when you utilize something like this onto a small scale to then explain onto a bigger scale why this is a new thing you end up with what is what we all know as the influencers you don't have to be the most compelling person to have that charisma. You just need to do something that you yourself have such a strong passion for that it 
just exudes charisma. It exudes something that is so compelling that you're drawn to copy and emulate what is before you. Because I've known a lot of people that are not charismatic whatsoever, but they believe in what they do so much that they literally change the landscape around themselves to become so much grander than what they have been before. It's why we have a lot of people that challenge the norms, a lot of people that try to attack what is popular, attack what is the head of the pack, because it exhumes that confidence and a lot of courage to do what they want to do that exhumes that feeling of charisma to be influential. And you guys can probably just be like, I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about, and just be like, uh, it sounds like some a, a smart person would say, I guess so. Oh, you sound like you're so stupid. And I'm like, alright, y'all have the right to think that, but I don't know. I don't know. That's just how I see things. But maybe that's because I've been really getting into psychology a lot. And I'm really, really, really going crazy. Emmy, why must you talk negative here? You know you're not allowed to do that. Why must you do these things here? That's not allowed. Well, if you want to prove that, then you'll have to test it first. At least, that was how they thought. That was why they decided to do their experiment. That was how the Nonary Project began. By the way, Junpei? Have you ever heard of the Gansfeld experiment? Yeah, that was an experiment in telepathy, right? You place a pair of subjects in separate rooms. Then you show one a picture and ask the other what they see. Interesting. I'm impressed. Yes, that is exactly correct. So, why did you bring up the Gansfeld experiment? It was used to screen subjects for the Nonary Project. The hospital in a remote town was affiliated with Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Hongo used it to conduct experiments on visiting children in secret. Some of them, he found, had potential. Okay, um, animators don't have a smile when Snake is saying that he visited children. That's just creepy and wrong. He began to gather children that showed promise. Children that seemed as though they might be able to access the field. Of course, none of them volunteered. They were... kidnapped. There were nine pairs of siblings taken, for 18 children total. For reasons that were not fully understood at the time, each pair had one transmitter and one receiver. They were split perfectly. As such, the 18 children were split into two groups of nine. The children who were put into Group Q were the ones who excelled at transmitting. They were transferred to the mock experiment building known as Building Q in the Nevada desert. The children who excelled at receiving were put in Group A. Group A was then placed on the former hospital ship Gigantic. From the experiments he had conducted so far, Hongo had learned the following. There are two things that can increase one's resonance with the fields. The first is epiphany, the other is danger. Have you ever been faced with an especially difficult problem and thought about it very long and very hard until finally an answer suddenly appeared in your mind? It may seem obvious to say so, but that is what is meant by epiphany. The information obtained through that epiphany can be easily transmitted through the fields, where it can be easily interpreted. Adding danger to that equation allows for even easier field access. That's where Hongo came in. They set up a number of puzzles across the gigantic. The participants had to solve each one before they could move to the next room. Of course, he hadn't forgotten to include danger. He had detonated a bomb on the hull of the gigantic. The children in Group A were forced to play the nonary game as the ship sunk. By forcing the children into a life-or-death situation, Hongo hoped to increase the likelihood of their tapping into the fields. 
The children from Group Q, on the other hand, were confined to the mock experiment building, Building Q. Building Q duplicated the interior and puzzles of the gigantic exactly. Every detail was exactly the same. Hongo explained the situation to the children in Group Q. Solve the puzzles you find throughout the rooms. When you have the answers, transmit that information to the children in Group A. If you succeed, they will be able to solve the puzzles and escape. But if you fail, then the gigantic will sink and your brothers and sisters will drown. Those were his orders. Do you know why the astronauts of Apollo 13 were able to return to Earth safely? I'm just gonna pause there. Guys, do you understand the fuckery that's going on right now? Because this is the workings of a madman. This man here, who eventually found himself with the disease to be unable to register people's faces kidnapped children to basically figure out how to make telepathy more accessible under his pharmaceutical company and it resulted in a child dying all because they wanted to make transmitter and receiver research into a legitimate field of study to make it the social norm. And because of that, we have the events of this game. Are you guys seeing why I said, are you ready for some bullshittery? Are you guys ready for some fuckery? Because this was grade A fuckery. This made no goddamn sense for any of this to begin. The revenge plot? Yeah, I get that. But the whole reason behind why the revenge happened? This shit makes no sense. This shit makes no sense fucking ever. This is probably one of the most convoluted things I've ever seen in my life. And I've played the Kingdom Hearts franchise. That is how bad this is as a plan. Ace literally made the entirety of the Kingdom Hearts franchise make sense in comparison to his plan to utilize children that he kidnapped from hospitals. Hospitals. This simple fuck... It was because NASA had access to a replica of the Apollo 13 capsule. All of the equipment, the instruments, everything. All of it identical. Everything was just like the real Apollo 13. NASA was able to replicate the situation the astronauts found themselves in. By putting themselves in the same situation, they attempted to solve the problems the astronauts were dealing with. Once they found solutions, they reported their findings to the men aboard the actual capsule. That was how they were able to return safely. It was the same with the gigantic in Building Q. The children from Group Q had to use the power of Epiphany to solve the puzzles they found and transmit what they learned through the fields. The children in Group A, however, they had to access the fields to learn how they might advance to the next stage. That is the simplest explanation I can manage. Huh. Hey, Junpei, Snake! How much longer are you two gonna sit around on those bony asses? Get down here already! He's right. Let's go, shall we? We don't have much time. We need to get out of here and soon. Hold it. There's one more thing I want to ask you. Hmm? Are you sure that there were 18 kids? Why? Well, I thought it was only 16. Oh, yes. That was what they said on the news, wasn't it? Yes. I have no doubt that 18 children were abducted and used in Hongo's experiment. After all, you couldn't exactly play a nonary game with any less, could you? Well, yeah, but... 
Are you saying that the news got it wrong? Yes, I am. There were two more children. Would you guys like me to tell you who the other two children were, or do you want to be surprised? Because let me tell you, it's a doozy. However, they had no relatives that I'm aware of. I imagine no one filed a police report when they went missing. They were brother and sister, like Clover and I. The brother's name was Aoi. The sister's name was... Her name was... <laughs> Her name was Akane. Surprise! <laughs> oh, God! Do you guys want to know who Aoi was? I bet you do, but you're probably figuring that out right now. So, um, y'all have fun with it. Enjoy the head cannon y'all have been making so far. Yeah, yeah, Emmy, and enjoy that head cannon. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm yep, yep. In enjoy that because now it's destroyed. That was the girl who died. <laughs> Akane Kurashiki died nine years ago. Then, it, who is Chun? No. no. It can't be true. Akane isn't that uncommon of a name. If Snake had known her last name, that's a different matter entirely. So they share a name. A lot of other people do too. It doesn't mean anything. There was someone else. Of course it was. It has to be. <laughs> is something wrong, Junpei? Your breathing sounds strange. Oh, uh, no, it's, it's nothing. I'm fine. Let's get back down there, all right? <sighs> I couldn't do it. Why didn't I ask? What's her last name? I just couldn't get the words to come out. Enjoyed that. <laughs> mhm. Mm so throughout the rest of this, I'm not voice acting a goddamn thing. <laughs> Like you guys, did you guys figured I wouldn't find out? Like, bruh, I found this out literally when I was trying to get all of the endings, and I found that shit out so fast, but I didn't want to ruin any fun. So, it's a thick metal door.
cannon is now gone. <laughs> that head cannon is now gone. And I know you guys are thinking to yourself, oh my god, V is so evil, what the fuck? This is the next. Oh, the door. Did that just close on its own? Don't tell me we can't go back. I don't know. Let's see. Damn it. It looks like it locks automatically. Is there any other way out? Well, uh, there's another door over on the right. There's a card reader next to it. It's got a red light on it, though, so I'm pretty sure it's locked, too. But there is a card reader, right? Yeah. Then perhaps if we find a key card, we could open the door and leave? Okay, Sweeps, have a good rest of your night, big sis. Take care. It was great seeing you, and we'll catch up soon, I promise. Well, yeah, that might work, but... Uh, hey! Wait a minute! Are you saying we're gonna have to search through this room for one little card? Oh, man. <sighs> Looks that way. No way! <laughs> Well, we can sit down and wait to die, if that's what you prefer. I rather doubt that, however, so it would be wise to start looking. We haven't much time. Let's find that key card. Oh, and the Neptune key as well. We won't be able to get through the hallway without it. <sighs> All right then, let's begin. as this is enjoyable and as much as Emmy is just like unclean unclean I'm, I'm gonna cry in the shower now unclean 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 I'm going to actually first check to see how long we have been live two hours okay so, two hours, with another two hours from the last time we tried, so four hours in total. Two hours additionally, that's six. Well, technically, two hours, 40 minutes, and then an hour and a half. I've literally been streaming for like a long fucking time. In any event, though, it's raid time. So, you guys know the deal. I'm going to be saving because, fuck yeah, I'm going to be saving. Where I'm going to be throwing the host to my boy, Shoop. 
Why? Because Shoop is awesome and he is incredible. And I want to support him because that is my dude. And I'll see you guys Wednesday or tomorrow afternoon. I don't know which. Peace!